Okay, first of all, how dope is this little statue thing right here? It's like a little like globe that just spins with water. Really dope. Anyway, okay, that doesn't matter. What is up, awesome peeps? Brent McCluskey here with Electrified Reviews, and today we are going over the Furro X folding electric bike. So obviously a lot of you guys are tuning in today because we are doing the giveaway results for the GoTrax GXL, the last video that we did. We will be covering that here in a little bit, but first let's talk about this bike because this thing is super dope. It's, okay, so here's what I love about it. Okay, so I live upstairs in an apartment and I love big, powerful, fast electric bikes. They are awesome, but sometimes it just gets a little, I don't know, frustrating, difficult, annoying, whatever you want to call it, to try to trek these things down and up the stairs. Something like this though, it's got an all carbon frame. It only weighs 33 pounds. It's really lightweight. It's got a nice compact frame. It's just easy to like pick this thing up and maneuver it around, get it up and down stairs. It's just perfect for going like those shorter distances to like the store, the gas station, whatever, to get groceries, stuff like that. Uh, it's just easy, man. It's just easy to kind of, to deal with this bike compared to some of these full frame ones. The, the full carbon frame, the frame in general, there's just so much about this bike that's entirely unique from um, a lot of the other electric bikes that I've tested before. It's always fun, always interesting, always cool to see you know fresh designs. This is like pretty much designed from the ground up. Um, Furrow Systems did a really good job of um, doing a lot of proprietary stuff. So you know what, let's go ahead and dive in, check this thing out a little bit closer. All right, a lot of cool stuff to go over here with this bike. Let's start by checking out this motor here in the back. This is a 250 watt Bafeng hub motor. Now, what's interesting about this motor is it's going to be a very efficient motor, right? 250 watts, not super powerful, definitely enough to get me around, get me zipping where I need to go. However, because it's only 250 watts, it's not gonna drain too much of the battery here. This is the battery, 36 volt, 10.4 amp hour system, 378 watt hour so it's a you know a fair sized battery not huge not super small it's kind of just like you know it's like goldilocks like right there in the middle right uh, but again what's cool about this setup here with the motor and the battery is it's going to give me a fair amount of range realistically probably somewhere you know between 25 to 35 miles depending on how i really ride this thing another cool little feature or just kind of something that's inherent with this bike here is because these are only 20 inch tall wheels, 20 by 1.75 inches here, uh, the motor has a mechanical advantage. It just makes this thing faster, it makes it zippy, and it actually feels more powerful than just the uh, 250 watt motor. So that's really cool over here. Overall though, man, this bike is just, to me, it looks really cool. It's packed with a lot of, like I said, like really just proprietary features here. It does come with a rear rack right here. Um, and also, you know, for like assembling this thing, it was really easy. Uh, it came fully assembled. All I had to really do was just unfold this thing, put the handlebars up, and <laughs> it was good to go. Uh, derailleur back here, also another really cool little feature. This is a Shimano Sora derailleur. This is a pretty high-end derailleur, guys. It's a nine-speed, um, good quality stuff here. I mean, look, just the, the details here. Check out this, um, this aluminum bash guard. Like, 
overkill. Not even necessary, but they have it, and it just helps protect the um, the chain ring here from damage if I do strike something. Just a lot of really cool stuff. Locking mechanism here to fold this thing. It is really easy. Just uh, push this little button and pull this latch out, and it folds up pretty quickly. It does have a telescoping stem, so I can adjust the height of the handlebars here, which is nice. It's going to kind of like accompany, um, like it's going to accommodate like a wider range of riders, right? And that's kind of what you need because this is really only one frame size here. It does have lights. It has a light here in the front. Um, I don't believe this one is integrated, it's just a little push button, not super bright, it is going to illuminate my path a little bit. More than anything though, it's just going to kind of like let people know, hey I'm here, it's just kind of like a, you know, it'll flash, push it again, flash it slower, push it again steady, push it again off. There are lights back here in the battery, let's see if I can turn this on real quick. Boom, little tiny light right there, now, it does have blinkers though, there's like a little thing on the handlebars. So if I want to it's like turn signals, I can just push this. I don't know if I have the batteries installed in that, but if the batteries are installed, the blinkers turn on here. Just kind of like a safety feature. That's kind of cool. Uh, so for braking, right, 160 millimeter calipers for the brakes front and rear. But even cooler than that, we've got hydraulic disc brakes, Shimano hydraulic, hydraulic disc brakes. These are great. Gives it tons of stopping power. Um, the brake levers themselves are adjustable. Just a lot of really cool stuff. Like, look at the wire wrapping here. It's just so clean. Everything on this bike is just so clean, so dope. Um, man, what else here? So this thing runs for $27.50, this bike here, which is definitely, like, not an entry-level bike. This is, like, somebody who's looking for, you know, the finer things, like a polished bike, right? Something that's, like, kind of a little bit higher end. Um, not somebody probably who's looking for their first electric bike. Um, just honestly, that's not really what I don't think this thing is kind of geared for. So, you know, it is what it is. It's definitely expensive, but it comes with some really high quality components. The carbon fiber frame itself, I mean, to me, that makes it worth it. That lightweight at 33 pounds, I just love that. The other small little feature here is the pedals themselves do fold. It just makes for like an even more compact package. I'm gonna show you guys how to fold this thing here real quick or just show you how easy it is, I guess. Let me set this down. All right, so folding it, again, not very hard. Just push that button I showed you guys, pull the lever, and it's kind of stiff, uh, which is good. I like that the frame here is stiff in the middle. Just fold in half like this. And then if I want it to balance, um, you know, so I can set it down, all I have to do is basically put the pedal like this, uh, drop the seat post here all the way, and then this thing will actually set down like this. Let's actually, you know, let's see if we can do it real quick here. So drop the seat post, oh, wrong way. <laughs> I'm doing it like completely wrong. There we go. Yeah, see, and it'll balance there by itself. So, pretty dope. All right, well, look, enough talking about this bike. Let's take this thing out for a ride and I'll show you this bike here in action. All right, so this is actually my second attempt at filming the ride portion here. The first one, my GoPro decided, hey, we don't need this footage, we're gonna delete it. But honestly, I'm not very upset about it because this bike is really fun to ride, so it's kind of, just another excuse to go out with it. Um, and also it's kind of going to be nice to be able to do somewhat more of a real world range test because I'm putting more miles in the frame. So really <laughs> in the end it works out. So right when I started talking there, I was climbing just a little bit of a hill, nothing too serious at all. Um, but going back to that 250 watt motor and the, the wheel size here of being only 20 inches tall, it really does give that thing a mechanical advantage and it makes it, it makes it feel like a 500 watt motor. Now this motor does have a 250 watt nominal output, but it also has a 500 watt peak output. So there is that. Also these Bafeng motors, uh, the smaller ones have I think 60 newton meters of torque, which is pretty good. That's kind of like the highest torque output of like these higher end motors like the Broza and stuff like that. So the Bafeng motors, I, I've really come to like them. Now one thing here, I'm going to show you this real quick first, here's a brake test as we're coming up to a, uh, a stop sign here, so we're going 16 miles an hour and full brake test, oh, okay, yeah, so there's the hydraulic brakes in action, um, again hydraulic brakes, they just, they just give you a lot of stopping power and for electric bikes that go a lot faster, I think that's a really important thing, but 
This bike, the Furo X Max, has a cadence sensor. It's a 12 magnet cadence sensor. Um, now, 12 magnets, that's going to be a higher resolution than, say, a cadence sensor with like eight magnets or six magnets even. So the start and stop response time from the time that I start and stop pedaling to the time that the motor actually starts and stops giving power is going to be pretty quick. It's not going to be as quick as, say, a torque sensor, um, but still for a cadence sensor, this one's pretty good. So it's gonna be hard for you guys to hear, but I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you. So I'm gonna start pedaling. Hold on here, here we go, okay. Start pedaling, motor activates. Stop pedaling, motor deactivates. These cars, why do they? Why are there so many cars in the road? I mean, it's, just, it's my road. Just kidding, okay. We're gonna go onto a side street here. Okay, let's try that again. Starting pedaling, motor activates. Stop pedaling, motor deactivates. So you guys can't really hear it, I'm sure, but just to give you an idea, it is pretty quick here. Now. I want to go back to just the overall kind of like price, feel, stuff like that of this bike again. So remember, this thing costs $2,750, $2,750 bucks USD, which is, again, it's a hefty price. That's a, a premium price for a premium bike. But I feel like something that Furrow Systems does here is they do a couple cool things that they really don't have to do, but they do it just because they're cool, I guess. Like, so first of all, they offer free shipping, um, which is great. Not a lot of companies do that because it costs a lot of money to ship these things. So that's like a nice savings of a couple hundred bucks typically right there for free shipping. That's dope. They also have a two year warranty on their bikes, um, which is fantastic. And honestly, that's something I would expect for a price point of, of this 2,750 bucks. I would expect a good um, warranty. And it's great that these guys have kind of followed through on that and given us a good warranty. So if something does go wrong, you know, there's like the confidence that, okay, I can call these guys up, take it to a shop or whatever. They'll take care of me and kind of get this done, you know? So I do like that. Now driving this bike overall, how it feels is it feels really zippy, really maneuverable because of that shorter wheelbase, because of the smaller tires and lower to the ground. It feels almost like a BMX bike a little bit, but it also feels a little less stable compared to a full size bike because it's not a full size bike, right? The wheelbase is not as long, so it's just not quite as stable. So it's easier to kind of, you know, twist around stuff like this, but it can feel, I don't know, just not quite as stable, I guess. But that's not a big deal. I wanna go back to also just the, the weight of this thing, kind of show you guys. I think, you know, one of the things I really love about this is just the weight, um, being able to just stop, pick this thing up if I want to. I mean, I would never do this, but let's be like, oh, I wanna put this on, <laughs> on this, uh, on this uh, table right here for whatever reason. Yeah, it's not hard to do, right? Um, there you go, really easy, really lightweight, and it's just, it just makes it easy to get this thing around, you know? All right, let's keep going here. A couple other things I wanted to mention. We're actually gonna go off-road here a little bit just to show you what it's like to go on like a dirt trail, some go over some grass, stuff like that. This is not an off-road bike at all, but um, like most bikes, this thing can it can take it can take modest trails. It can take dirt roads, stuff like that, compact gravel, whatever. I'm not gonna want to do, do any jumps, especially because it's a folding bike. Um, but yeah, it can it can go off-road. And something I want to speak to about that is look, this bike doesn't have any suspension, it's a hardtail. Um, and uh, you know it's got solid forks in the front, no suspension. So I can probably add a seat post suspension or a, a saddle suspension, but not a seat post suspension. And here's why: the seat post here is really, really dope. It's if you guys remember, like when I showed you the B roll here in the beginning, kind of the walk around. It's kind of like the seat post itself is like a teardrop shape. And what I like about that is it's not going, it's, it means there's no way for it to twist around. The saddle is not gonna twist uh, horizontally while I'm riding, even if it's kind of loose. Um, and that's kind of a problem that I have with a lot of you know, bikes sometimes is I feel like no matter how tightly I, I clench that seat post down, it does twist every once in a while. With this seat post, that's just not gonna happen because of the shape. However, it does mean that finding an, a seat post suspension is gonna be, Pretty much impossible so i'm going to be left with only the option of having like a saddle suspension um like a suspension that's actually built into the saddle Ooh, here we go <laughs> which they do make <laughs> this is probably not a good idea ah, to be talking and doing this oh that water part every time it scares me going by that you probably couldn't see it from this angle but there's a river down there and i always feel like i'm like this close to falling in <laughs> but whatever uh yeah so anyways now we're going over some gravel and it's it's bumpy um it's doable, 
would I want to ride on this for a long time? No, but I feel like one of the philosophy of uses for this bike would be something like taking it camping, taking it to an RV park, so people who travel, and I think, you know, having the confidence to know that, yeah, I can take this thing on, you know, dirt trails to get in and out of the campground until I get to the main city. Like, that's a good thing to know. Like, this bike is solid enough. You know, the folding mechanism isn't going to collapse. The handlebars aren't going to collapse. The seat post, the saddle's not going to sink down. Like, everything is, is locked up really secure in this bike. They did a good job with that furrow system. So, you know, hats off to them. Top speed on this thing is, they say it's 15 miles per hour on the website. The bike that I have right now, it feels like the motor tops out at about 16.5 miles per hour. I have a feeling here that the motor is custom wound um, just because, whoa, that actually wheelied right there. I have a feeling the motor here is custom wound um, and I get that sense because it feels like it's not topping out at 16.5 miles an hour because of the speed limiter. It feels like the motor is winding out at that speed. And if it is custom wound, that's cool because it means that the top speed is limited. Um, because of the gearing, which means it's going to be more torquey. And again, this thing does feel more torquey than an average 250 watt bike. So I'm going to go ahead and say it's a custom wound motor. Not 100% sure, but that's the feeling that I get. Um, anyways, you know, 16.5, let's just say the top speed is 15 miles per hour here. Um, on most bikes, you can change the top speed in the display. I looked around for quite a while. I couldn't find anything in the back end of the settings for you guys. I really wanted to show you that, but it might be there somewhere. I couldn't find it. Uh, there are a lot of settings back there, like deep settings you can get into if you want to, but I couldn't find the top speed. So I'm really just blabbering at this point, <laughs> trying to find a reason to keep going. All right, well, look. <clears throat> I estimated the range here to be about 25 miles, 35 miles, depending on rider weight, um, depending on how I ride this, uh, depending on the terrain, the weather, barometric pressure, humidity, like whatever, like all the little stuff, really it all does matter. Um, I've gone 7.7, .7, okay, so I'm 180 pounds, I've got like a 25 pound backpack on, so what is that, 205 pounds? I know, I'm like a math genius. So like 205 pounds, um, and I've gone 7.7 .7 miles so far, and I have 60% battery left. So let's see, 20% increments, what is that? Let's see, 10 would be 7.7 .7 times two would be 15.4. Uh, uh, so <laughs> I don't know, I'm just trying to ride, guys. You do the math, 60% left, 7.8 miles, I don't know. Um, I think that's it, man. I think that's it. This is a dope bike. I'm just going to keep riding for a little more. And uh, I hope you guys really... Oh, shoot. You know what we got to do? I completely forgot. Okay. Giveaway. Duh. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Giveaway results. I cannot believe I almost forgot this here. Hold still, bike. All right. So, here's what I'm going to do. Let's go to... Can you guys see this here? All right, also, bike, come on. I was watching some Black Ops stuff. I, I love Black Ops, by the way. Blackout is just like, it's my jam. Okay, so we're going to, what am I doing here? We're gonna to go to this video. I hope you guys can see this. No, we're gonna share this, or grab the link. Copied. We're gonna to go to cometpicker.com. Going to throw in URL here. Okay, we're gonna filter duplicate results because basically that means like, you know, if we've been talking on there, you guys have commented more than once, it's still only gonna count for one uh, submission. Search. Uh, start, okay, yeah, we gotta start it. <laughs> All right, it's going, here we go. Come on, baby, come on. Winner, Joe C. Liked, commented, and followed. Thanks for the chance to win. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Joe C. Um, yeah, you won the GoTrax GXL electric scooter from the last video. Again, we're announcing that here. So, yeah, congratulations. If you guys did not win, I am, of course, very sorry. I really wish I could just, like, give everybody you know, these giveaways. However, I am going to be doing at least two more giveaways in the very near future. Near future. I already have those um, kind of organized and set up for you guys. So, really excited to, to do some more giveaways in the future. So, if you didn't win, I'm sorry, but stick around. Hopefully you'll have better luck next time. Okay. All right, awesome peeps. That is it for the review of the Furrow X. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I hope you dug this review. I hope you have a fantastic holiday season. It is almost Christmas. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.